This is the beautiful new Orbea Orca OMX. It's Orbea's latest performance racing machine and the OMX designation represents the pinnacle in Orbea's carbon fibre technology and construction. I'm going to tell you all about it, I'm going to go through all the new features and I'm going to weigh it. But before I do, make sure you subscribe to GCN if you haven't already and click the little bell icon as this will give you notifications when we upload videos and, well, help support the channel. There's certainly been a trend this year for lightweight, disc brake equipped, aerodynamic road bikes. And well, the Orca OMX certainly follows that trend. Consequently, we've got aerodynamic tube shapes and sort of fast back or cam tail style cross sections to the tube profiles. Other aero features such as dropped seat stays, increased integration. It's very hard to spot cables on this bike and it's lightweight and it's got disc brakes. In fact, it's only available in disc brakes. Now, at this point, many of you will be sat at home watching and saying, all these new lightweight aero bikes look like they have been designed with a piece of tracing paper. Okay, now in one sense, you're correct. However, the new OMX has a couple of aces up its sleeve. Mayo is Orbea's custom paint program, and it's available at no extra cost at the point of purchase, meaning that you can completely customise the way that your Orbea looks. You can make it completely unique. The Mayo programme has been around for a few years now, and you may remember Sai getting a custom bike painted. But with the Orca OMX, Mayo has now been updated. It allows you even more options to create a paint job and finish that's unique to you. There are loads of colour options. You can have multiple colours, gloss finishes, matte finishes, as well as fades. And as part of the update, Orbea is now offering various graphic options too. The styles of these graphics include cubism, street nature, titanium, dots and fluid. And these graphics are great for further personalising your bike and making the finish a little more interesting and add aesthetics that you don't see on other bikes. But something I particularly like is that the styles like dots and titanium graphics can add transparency, meaning that the finish is influenced by the base colour you choose underneath. Better make sure you choose wisely, but don't worry, it's really fun to have a play with, so head over to Mayo, uh, their webpage, and see what you can come up with. This level of customization really does set the bike apart. The custom paint job on the bike that Orbea has sent us for this first look has some rather appropriate GCN custom colors. So we've got red, black, and white, and this really sweet fade on the down tube between the red and the black. We've also got some nice detailing on the fork. That particular pattern is called titanium. While on the subject of the fork, you may notice that it's got these kind of like bowed out fork blades. Now, Orbea calls this the free flow fork. It's the same design as found on the Orbea Orca Aero Aero bike, and it's designed to improve airflow and reduce turbulence around the front wheel. Orbea also has several options that allow you to personalize your build and the components on it. So, for example, you can change out the crank lengths, the gear ratios, the wheels. You have a choice of different saddles. And this is really great. It, it's a shame more bike brands don't offer this, as it means you get the components that you want and also the ones that are the right size for you. Out on the road, Orbea claims that the new Orca OMX has significant aerodynamic improvements over the previous model. And it quantifies this by way of an 8 watt drag saving or a 10% aero improvement. And this equates roughly to 27 seconds saved over 50 kilometers at 50k an hour. Now, I'm sure, like many of you, I very rarely travel at those speeds for that distance. And at the more realistic speeds that I travel at, that saving will be less, but it's an improvement nonetheless.
Obeya claims that the new bike is slightly lighter than the old one too. And there's figures of 796 grams for an unpainted size 53 frame. And for the size 55 I'm riding, you could expect to add around 30 to 40 grams onto that figure, which is pretty light for an aero disc brake equipped bike that's lightweight <laughs> and useful seeing as right now I'm climbing. And despite reducing the weight, Orbea claims that the new bike is 15% stiffer too, which is, well, nice. Let's weigh the whole bike though and see what it's coming in at. Ooh, 7.35. That's impressive. Um, I'm quite excited about that because my Orbea Orca disc, that's the previous version, actually weighs a little bit more than that and it doesn't look anywhere near as aerodynamic. Now, Obeya has over a hundred, well, nearly a hundred years in designing performance racing bicycles. So it's fair to say they know a thing or two about geometry. And the geometry on the new OMX is aggressive. It's intended to be a racing machine and it's been optimized for precise uh, handling. Now you've probably been enjoying this view of my rather handsome front end. And that's thanks to Orbea's new proprietary cockpit, its new separate bar and stem. The stem is available in 80 to 150 millimeters and the bar is available in 38 to 44. I've got 42 centimeters on at the moment and a 110 stem. And it does a really neat job of hiding all the cables and routing them through the stem just to give a really neat and integrated an aero look and you've also got this new faceplate mounted uh, computer mount on the front as well which I've got my Wahoo Roam attached to and there's a little sort of bracket underneath so that you can attach a light or an action camera or another accessory and yes when you buy the bike at the point of purchase you can select the size bars and stem that you want meaning you get exactly what's right for you and this is great because most bike brands out there they don't give you the option. It just comes with what it comes with if it's, a, say, a, a size 55. The build we have here is a top of the range one. So you've got Jura Ace DI2 throughout the bike, including the junction box for the DI2, which is located rather neatly here in the down tube. I like that. Uh, we've got 160 rotors front and rear a Seller Italia SLR boost saddle, truncated saddle with carbon rails, nice. And these rather tasty looking Mavic Universal Tubeless Pro Carbon wheels. Other new features then, we've got split spacers underneath the new proprietary integrated stem for easier adjustment if you don't have to take apart your hydraulic lines for the disc brakes. We've got a new proprietary seat post and a seat post clamp. So this is a D-shaped seat post or cam tail profile for improved aerodynamics and the, uh, the bolt for it is integrated and really neat. It's very similar to the one that's found on the previous Orca actually. And we've got blooming loads of tyre clearance on this bike. Check this out. So apparently you could uh, get 32 millimetre tyres in the new Orca and well, there's just, you can get a bus through there. There's loads of space. And the reason for this is that Orbea reckons that the biggest factor in improving comfort on a road bike is tyre volume. And they reckon that tyre volume makes way more difference than building sort of flexible areas into carbon fibre bike frames. Right, I hope you've enjoyed this first look at the new Orbea Orca OMX. And if you have, then please give it a thumbs up as it will help others find the video too. I think it looks absolutely great, but let us know in the comments section what you think about it. And to see another video where Cy rides a retro steel Orbea as ridden to victory in the 1985 Vuelta Espana by Pedro Delgado, click down here on the new one.